I spoke the truth about the evil crimes of the North Korean regime. And I made clear that we will not allow this twisted dictatorship to hold the world hostage to nuclear blackmail. I called on every nation, including China and Russia, to unite in isolating the North Korean regime, cutting off all ties of trade and commerce until it stops its dangerous provocation on, and this is the whole key to what we're doing, on denuclearization. We have to denuclearize North Korea. We have ended the failed strategy of strategic patience, and as a result, we have already seen important progress, including tough new sanctions from the UN Council. We have a Security Council that has been with us and just about with us from the beginning. South Korea agreed to harmonize sanctions and joined the United States in sanctioning additional rogue actors whose fund and funds have helped North Korea and North Korea's nuclear and ballistic missile programs. It's unacceptable to us. The United States welcomed the decision of President Moon to remove the payload restrictions on missiles to combat the North Korean threat. And together, we reaffirmed our commitment to a campaign of maximum pressure. choice but to totally destroy North Korea. A warning from President Trump what will happen if the U.S. is forced to defend itself against North Korea. The president recognizes that we're running out of time. Many interpret that to mean that the president is actively considering the use of nuclear weapons in order to deal with the threat of North Korea. The rhetoric leading to an extraordinary hearing. For the first time in more than 40 years, the Senate Foreign Relations Committee publicly questioning how and when a president can launch nuclear weapons. But this time, it is also about Donald Trump. We are concerned that the president of the United States is so unstable, is so volatile, has a decision-making process that is so quixotic that he might order a nuclear weapon strike that is wildly out of step with U.S. national security interests. CNN has learned that some U.S. allies, as well as some in Congress, have sought reassurances that Trump could not rashly order a nuclear strike, even though he has the authority to do so. Many Americans share my fear that the president's bombastic words could turn into nuclear reality. But sharp warnings about changing decades of the president's ultimate war authority. I think if we were to change the decision-making process uh, in some way to, because of a distrust of this president, I think that would be an unfortunate precedent. A former top nuclear commander underscoring a nuclear strike order must be legal in proportion to the threat. If there is an illegal order presented to the military, the military is obligated to refuse to follow it. And no appetite for change from the defense secretary. I think that uh, we have to keep trust, keep faith in the system that we have that has proven effective now for decades.
we know that we are playing with somebody who releases uh, letting go his missiles and everything. I would not want to go into his mind because I really do not know what's inside. But he's putting Mother Earth, the planet, to an edge. If one miscalculation of a missile, whether or not a nuclear warhead or just an ordinary dumb bomb, one explosion there that would hit somebody could cause a catastrophe. This is Matt Bradley aboard the USS Nimitz in the Sea of Japan. For all of President Donald Trump's bark, this could be his bite. I think they understand we have unparalleled strength. For the first time in a decade, three aircraft carriers and more than a dozen warships running joint maneuvers with Japan and South Korea, putting North Korea on notice. Any nuclear tests, no matter how many missile launches North Korea attempts, they can't compete with the U.S. Air Force. Rear Admiral Gregory Harris commands the USS Nimitz Strike Group. This is Sierra 9 Tango, roger up. We're obviously looking for any kind of peaceful solution to any conflict worldwide, uh, but that peaceful resolution is backed up by having the ability to be able to do what's necessary should that become needed. Do you prepare for potential conflict? Actually, I don't. Because if there's a war, it's going to be a minute or two minutes that I have to. There's no option to be alive. It's like we just live only today. Live in the no, moment. No tomorrow for us. We only have this moment. So when I go out in the street and I see the places happy and buzzing. Yeah, that's why. We always have a concert and go to movies or love each other. But we only concern about today. That's why. Because we're not sure about tomorrow. Well, people just like think about North Korea equal like nuclear dictatorship. But obviously, there's more than those kind of two things, people's life. So, but the people that I met here, I believe, just thought that nuclear and dictatorship is North Korea. It's not. There's a people's life, more than 23 million people still living in there, under repressive society, brainwashing system. So. I hope they please remember their life. So when, when, whenever you heard about nuclear, you heard about Kim Jong-un, please remember, please, their, the people's life still living under the like, repressive society, under the harsh economic condition.